Happy hour. This is as big as my head, boy. Yeah, I'm going to kind of wait here. I got a special guest going to join me on this call. On this, I always call it a call. I'm so used to doing Zoom calls. I always call it a call. Hey, there he is, the wild man himself. Man. What's taking, buddy? Hey, so we got to, we're going to talk about professional pit building, right? Oh, you want me to call, you want me to call Moberg? <laughs> we might need somebody to show us how, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey, we got to ask though real quick. First of all, everybody that's jumping on the call, this is my buddy Ryan from Backline Fab, aka Professional Builder and uh, Super Genius. Uh, when it when it comes to uh, bending tubing and doing creative things and all that kind of stuff on his cookers, he does some awesome stuff. I'm super glad you joined me, but we got to have a contest real quick, Ryan. You ready? Oh, uh, no. Yeah. We got to see whose beer is bigger. Yours is, I guarantee it. It's as big as my head, man. Yeah, see? <laughs> well, maybe. I oh, know. come on. What is that? Makers and Coke? No, Captain and uh, Dr. Pepper. Captain and Dr. Pepper. I almost went there, but from, I have to go Texas, somewhere. Man, everything is Dr. Pepper in it. Yeah. <laughs> I never did that. Cheers, everybody. It's happy hour. Just so you know, there is a 40% off sale going at my website called the happy hour sale. It goes until seven o'clock. Go to smokerplans.net. Anyway, let's get in here, Ryan, and mix it up and talk about building cookers. What are you building right now? I have uh, two of my competition pits, which are my 117 gallons that I'm building that go on the, uh, the little carts with the golf cart wheels. So one's going, um, one's going to New Hampshire and then one's staying here local in Texas. Hey, word on the street is that you sent one to my back door. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> up in Columbia. There's a 500 gallon up by you. Yeah, buddy, doing pop ups and stuff. Yes, sir. Well, yeah, that's uh, cool. uh, brick and mortar. They're uh, oh. they're going brick and mortar right now. Yeah, yeah. Tim Eisenhower, I believe his name is. Super good dude. I'm gonna go up there and eat some chow up at his place. Yeah. yeah. But uh, so hey, did you get go take a, don't go taking pictures of my pit though. Well, I did the other day on one of Sunny's. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was good. I was going to go in there, and but it was in a chain link fence. So me and a Aaron, my buddy, uh, Aaron Voigt down there, we were, we yep. ate Eric's barbecue in Phoenix, Arizona. I, I think it's, it's a suburb of Phoenix, but man, that guy's throwing down some good food, man. So you saw, so you saw the black one on the trailer. Yeah. I saw the black one on the trailer. I haven't actually, uh, went there and ate food yet, but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Leland, uh, Leland owns that one. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, you mean the one in Arizona? Yeah. Oh, no, no. That's Eric's Barbecue is the one oh. I went to. Yeah, there that guy. I haven't seen that one yet. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, that guy, uh, Eric's Barbecue has uh, got a joint. I don't even know what street because I'm still all screwed up where I was. It's somewhere around uh, Wigwam kind of area. That's yeah, where I'm staying. Because us in the central part of the world – our streets go all over the place. If you go to Phoenix, it's all a straight grid. It's like a it's like a piece of grid paper, you know. We we always said my grandpa always said you can always tell when a Frenchman designed the town or the German guy designed the town because <laughs> if the German guy designed the town, it's all squares and rectangles. If the French guy did it, it's all zigzag. All over the place. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so uh, how how did how if you had one? This is one question I wanted to ask you. If you had one piece of advice, now bear in mind. Most of the people that follow me at Smoker Builder here are guys that are aspiring to uh, um, are aspiring to become professional pit builders of some sort, either doing it for on the side or just doing it for fun. Or some guys actually want to fire their boss and do this for a living. If you had one piece of advice for that crowd of dudes, what would you tell them right now? I would tell them to follow your own. Uh, your own vision and your own, you know, aspirations and, and don't copycat anybody because that's <laughs> going to make you stand out from everybody else. Yeah. Dare to be your own person, right? your own pit. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people there that do that. And, uh, you know, when you see people copycat you, you know, it's kind of a pat on the back, but also you're kind of like, think of your own stuff kind of deal. So be the guy that thinks of your own stuff and, uh, you know, rise above the crowd. That's all. Yeah. I <laughs>
I, I, I would agree with you on that. Um, you know, there's, there's a few things I think about this once in a while, you know, there's so many good ideas out there and, and, uh, you know, as far as like the basic components, how many different ways can you make a component? Well, then, then you just kind of need to really get in there and start being creative, you know, and, and, uh, it's, it can be challenging, but it is the thing that sets you apart, especially just not even just like hinges and handles and stuff like that. It could simply be rectangle or square cook chambers. Like I'm working on a project right now for one that I don't think anybody's ever built that I know of except us, um, you know, and I'm, I'm it's for a, a barbecue restaurant, the design is, and, and I'm super excited about that. We're maybe putting a different kind of a thing on Texas barbecue pretty soon. Cause he's in Texas, <laughs> oh, man. but yeah, I'm excited about that. But, uh, okay. So favorite, uh, favorite kind of cooker to run operate on your own. Big, well, small, that's little, a, it, you know, cooker is, is, uh, <clears throat> it's a huge word, I guess, because that can go across the spectrum. Me, myself, yep. Personally, I like to cook a live fire. Um, mm -hmm. I like to taste a live fire food a lot better than, um, you know, smoked meats and stuff like that. And it don't kill me. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> That's my own personal <laughs> preference. But if I could cook a live fire um, all the time, that would be that would be my uh, my specialty, I think. That's so. the California coming out in you. That's right. West Coast. <laughs> West Coast. Try tip and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fire though you get so many different uh there's so many different elements that you get you know it's like if you season your meat and all that kind of stuff and as soon as you put a char on it what that does is that brings out every single flavor of that seasoning that char does and it and adds yeah. something totally different that you get um from a smoked meat you know and you know it's hard for me to say since i build 99 percent of you know offset cookers yeah you know, but the 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 live fire thing is is pretty much my jam you know so that that live fire cooker that you had up at uh, the Royal when we were hanging out, what what would it, what would you call that thing? That thing is amazing. That's called the multi tool. That's a the multi tool. <laughs> yeah, disc, and it's got all the cooking grates, the plancha, the hanging, you know, stuff. Everything, you know, you can do anything on it. And then when you're done and it's cold out, we didn't have that problem at the Royal. It's hot as shit. But yeah. like, uh, I just took it to San Antonio. When it's cold out, you take all the stuff off, you load the fire in there, now you have a stand up fire pit, you know. So yeah. It's pretty awesome. Sure. That that thing was awesome, man. I mean, it's an attention getter for sure because people walk by and they see a pineapple hanging over that fire and all the other stuff. It just is it just like wow, man. Yeah, it's just yeah. Like, we had wow. all the fingers coming by our camp. It was weird. Yeah. <laughs> hey, our buddy Magna Chef's on here. I just saw him go by. Guys, if you don't know who Magna Chef is. Uh, type in Magna Chef BBQ Glove. Ryan's got his right there. Man, them things are the best. There's actually a video in my profile back, I don't know, a month ago or so, uh, where I was actually holding a live fire in my hands in those gloves, and they are awesome. Um, yeah, he's down in uh, – You guys can see them. They stand up when you need to store them. They just stand up on their own. Throw them in the dish machine. 100%. Great gloves. By the way, that was not a solicited uh, advertisement for, for Al there. That was just like straight up, we're fans. <laughs> I got mine. They're in the truck. I never take them out, man. I'm always no, going for to cook. Us at the, uh, at the San Antonio Rodeo, man, which was uh, a pleasant surprise to have him, you know, come out from Florida and hang out with us. And uh, he promoted the shit out of his gloves. And I, I don't know, he showed up with a, uh, man, the box had to be, three feet tall by two by two. I mean, there had to be at least a hundred pairs of gloves in there and he sold every goddamn pair of them. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Everybody wanted them. It was awesome. And yeah. we did live demos. We did live demos right there. You know, there wasn't a point in time where Al wouldn't walk over and just grab a piece of coal out of the multi-tool or one of the fire pits and be like, this is how it works. Yeah. Or just, they just started throwing up money right in his hand. He's like, here we go. Give us our gloves. You know, <laughs> brisket was, medic here. Awesome Awesome deal to have him around. Absolutely. Brisket Medic says, pretty good guy for a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Al's a, a firefighter by day. So, um, yeah. So, let's see. What's coming next? What are you doing next with Backline? What's your What's your big target? Any Anything you're going to try to release this year, new product, anything like that? 
uh, I am actually working on a uh, on a product um, right now that is more on the live fire end of things. Um, and it's going to be something where there there won't be hardly any wait time. The wait time will only be two to three weeks uh, from the time of order. Uh, and I'm going to be putting those out. They're going to range about $2,500. I put one or two of them out already. Mm -hmm. Um, super badass. They got a lot of attention. Um, a lot of people want them. So I think it's going to be something pretty good. So if you guys need a live fire piece that has a grill, uh, a plancha plate, an area for a discada, um, a possibility of rotisserie, stuff like that, and a place to burn your own coals, uh, it's all going to be all inclusive. Um, for you know, starting price at twenty five hundo. If you go oh. with rotisserie and stuff like that, it's going to go up a little bit, you know, because we got to pay for the motors and shit. Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to offer those, and I'll probably do them in bulks of uh, anywhere from five to ten pieces at a time. Mm -hmm. And that the wait time is going to be nil. You know, it's going to be just a couple of weeks, not eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve months out like everything else. So, so I think that's something pretty good, and a lot of people might want to jump on. Yeah. So saying what you just said, what do you think the biggest single problem in, in uh barbecue pit building is right now? Wait time. Wait time. <laughs> Dude, it drives me nuts. It makes me sick to my stomach, man, because I'm so I'm so far behind on my own end and I have so many pits to build that it's like uh you know, you get an email from someone and all of a sudden you just feel super bad and you feel like a piece of shit because you're behind schedule and, and uh the stress that it adds to everything, um, it really puts a damper on you, you know, and, and the whole time you're really not a bad person. It's just, you're just behind. It just is what it is, you know, and I, and I work myself and, and, uh, you know, we're out on, on shipments and all the other stuff. And, and then honestly, like today in Texas, we had, you know, what a half a, a, a quarter inch of, snow so all of a sudden the whole state shuts down <laughs> down for two days where i can't even go to the shop you know because of ice and stuff yeah uh, you know, it's kind of pathetic but i mean that's the the gist of it i'm not gonna i'm not gonna ruin my truck and end up in a ditch man just to try to get a a cooker done you know because at yeah. the end of the day at the end of the day man we're building cookers man it's not life or death situations they're they're grills that cook food so man i used to say that all the time because i refrigerate <laughs> business so long for commercial food equipment and uh, supermarket stuff and i mean freaking it didn't matter walmart's got ice cream melting dude you got to get down there i don't even care if you're having a baby right now in the hospital it doesn't even <laughs> you got to go freaking get the ice cream to not melt you know and and, like, uh, ice cream man <laughs> so so i used to say fire trucks and ambulances you know is what it felt like and then you know as soon as i got out of that trade it's like dang this is what it should be like, man, because like barbecue is not fire trucks and ambulances. We could just sit back and have a beer, you know, until the until the lead time gets too long. And then we got problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, but, a lot of builders are sitting in that. Well, you should know a lot of us builders are sitting in that uh, same situation now just because of everything that's gone on and all, you know. Believe it or not, you guys, if you all watch the news, there's so much shit still that's out in, uh, you know, that's still sitting. <laughs> floating out in the coast that we can't even get a hold of yet it's yeah not, it's beyond we're our control. so we're doing the best we can uh you know in our control um you know and i'm trying to catch up i got some uh i got some new ways of some doing things where we're knocking you know we're knocking stuff out quite a bit faster and uh i just shut up barton <laughs> <laughs> I <know. laughs> so if anyone knows barton and i were really 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 tight buddies uh he's one of my best friends and uh yeah. we talk shit to each other so that's expected and so, he can cook good too he, uh he can, yeah well that's because he <laughs> uses me to lean on you know i give him a little i tell him what to use you know i got yeah <laughs> that would happen that would happen <laughs> hey so um we got a question down here uh ryan i'm gonna let you field this one um <laughs> I'm going to try to pronounce his username, Jorgel. Do you have a method for adding the right size firebox? Of course, I publish mine all the time, but I want to hear what you have to say. Like, what do you what do you do for firebox size? Do you have any kind of rule of thumb or something you could recommend? You know, it's funny as I base, I don't have any kind of a, you know, degree or thermal science, you know, engineering thought process, because that's like kind of beyond me. I'm not Frank Cox. He knows a lot of <laughs> shit. 
But what I, I kind of have based all my stuff on, um, uh, and it actually has been a hundred percent effective and my pits run really efficient and, uh, and pretty even I base all my stuff on cause my background before I ever even got into any of this. And before I got this in the movie business was, uh, car audio and video. And I always base stuff on building like a subwoofer enclosure. A subwoofer needs a certain amount of airspace in order to hit its um, peak performance. And mm-hmm. so what I look at is I look at airspace in the cook chamber compared to basically my amplified airspace, which would be my firebox. Um, and so I'll build my firebox according to the cook chamber for where I think is going to be best performance of pushing that hot air through that cook chamber. So. That yeah. also brings up another uh, point where some people do the collectors or the bigger stack elbows into whatever. Mine are just straight flow elbows into the same size pipe. Um, because in my calculations, the way that I look at things is all a bigger collector is doing on a certain end is just adding some more airspace. That's my mm-hmm. own personal opinion. And that's the way I <laughs> build my stuff. There's a lot of builders, obviously, that are going to you know, counteract that. Um, and they have their own theories on how it works, but my pits work. They run, uh, they run pretty goddamn perfect. Um, so I personally, am not going to change a thing. People have asked me to do collectors and I, I, I just don't do it. It's not my style. Hey, Joey strike wants to know if you can add a subwoofer to his cart. Joey, you're already pushing it, bud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my brother, Tom at smoker builder MFG. He's hanging on here. If you guys don't follow Tom, you should go over there and follow Tommy. He's a good dude. Did Tom jump on? Yeah, Tom, he's just in the comments down there. He's he's trying to steal our secrets. Oh, I see. Oh, broadcasting he across the internet. <laughs> he says, what the heck, man? For a conversation we had, Tom, we got to reconnect. Yeah. Hey, so uh, anyway, I had another question I wanted to ask you. Um, let's see if I can – get it back here was on along the same terms there. Um, but I lost it. Um, she gone. Anyway, ask me a question. You probably were, you probably were wondering where I got the snazzy haircut from. But Dude, I, I ain't wondering yeah. about that haircut right now. <laughs> you got to tell me. <laughs> it's a secret. <laughs> so, yeah. Let me ask you a question. So you're doing this, uh, you're doing the, the, smokerbuilder.com you're doing your um welding class right freak yeah dude during your welding class are you like just teaching uh welding stuff or are you actually teaching like pit building during your welding class so it it's different in every single course basically um the the main in person class is highly focused on whatever like we, we interview everybody when they come in the room. We want to get a feel about like, where's everybody at right now? How basic does this class be? Then we can go ahead and, and fine tune our uh, curriculum to that class. You know, there's small groups, about 10 people is what we limit it to. And uh, by the way, the next one comes up, it's uh, uh, March 19th. And what we do is <clears throat> we uh, we focus on from the most basic thing and then develop it on throughout the rest of the day. Now the, I, I yield the floor to Bob, um, Bob Moffitt. You know, if you don't follow Bob Moffitt, you've probably most likely watched one of his videos. YouTube, he was the host of weld.com for a lot of years. And um, anyway, so Bob is the head instructor. I just happen to have the facility and uh, we're focusing primarily on people that want to learn how to weld so that they can build a smoker. And uh, that does have a little bit of fabrication in there as well. The last class we did was 100% uh, just cutting and welding is all it was. You know, let's let's get, because everybody was having some struggles with different welder settings and stuff. As a matter of fact, um, one of the guys that came to the class has a uh, ESOB uh, 235IC. Um, It's the EM, so it's MIG only. It's not a multi-process. But um, he has that exact machine, and he's been having nothing but trouble with it. He just didn't get his settings right. And so in the class, this is insane, dude. What is this worth, right? When it, when a dude can go and sit with Bob himself and, like, actually run beads with the machine he has at home, 
Like that's insane, dude. To have somebody that can just sit there and help you run through whatever it is that's really struggling, man. That's a that's a big deal. And um, well, especially if it's on a unit that they use all the time, and you can help. Yeah. Them that now they can go home and and actually operate and do something good, you know. Yeah, so we've got a we've got a good presence of ESOB machines in there, but we also have an old Miller two eleven um, that was one of Tom's welders back in the day, and then uh, that two eleven is one of those auto set Millers, you know. And then we've got a, uh, a the new Blue Demon machine, multi process machine in there as well, which um, you know there's a world of difference between that machine and an ESOB, you know. I mean, just for just usability, but that that um, that Blue Demon machine is a great first welder. I mean, it's I'm blown away with uh, just the ease of use, and it is an inverter machine. So, um, as with all multi-process machines, though, uh, you know you're going to have some sacrifices you're going to make here and there on some settings and some things like that, simply to be able to do MIG, TIG, and stick. You know, uh, out of the- What's the biggest size wire you can run on one of those? Is it like an 035 or can you go up to an like an 040 or whatever with uh with flux core? So so yeah, you can run bigger wire with it. Um it does on 240 volt anyway. Um the max on it's 200 amp. So 40 might be a little bit big, but um I've had better results I think on quarter inch and uh corners and things like that just running it on uh, 030 wire. And then we just use the regular old uh, ER70 S6, you know, wire in 030. That's um, the wire. I'm I'm actually carrying that wire there at the shop. And then on the bigger machines, we use 035 typically. Um, but uh, but yeah, it man, that ESOB's a screaming machine. You you know you can do near spray arc on that machine. It's more like a globular deposit, but spray arc is awesome because you can go a lot faster and uh, you don't have a lot of spatter with that machine. Right. Uh, but just being able to run with a guy like Bob and just just learn from him in a in a personal like, you know, one on one setting is just awesome. I've I've had the privilege of uh, going to his shop a few times and and doing some stuff. He's just a Freaking guy's been welding longer than I've been alive. I mean, <laughs> seriously, he knows his stuff. You know, it's cool. Pause for a break right there. <laughs> Let's see. Agreed. Well, Blue Demon is great. Tom says the ESOB is even better, but the Miller Killer 255C is where it's at. Every welder in the shop pulled porosity the other day, and the Lincoln Killer it. Yeah, the Lincoln killed it. Yeah, that Lincoln machine that he's got is a bad machine, boy. I like that. We we've burned a lot of wire through that machine. What do you use, Ryan? Uh, I have a uh, Lincoln two two fifty six. Oh, okay. Is precision uh, precision uh, MIG? Or yeah, yeah, I think that's it. Shut you've up. you've got a lot more no, settings. Just partially, he's having a man huh? over here. What's that? Tom, you just texted me personally. He's having a man crush. Oh. <laughs> hey, hold on. I got to check something quick. Is that too yeah. dark? Is, is what? Is that too dark now? That's perfect. Oh, you had it. That's dark. That's too dark? Yeah. All I can see is your hair glowing. That's right, baby. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, the stupid phone's about to die. Hold on. Let me get some. Hey, Frank, entertain people real quick. Let me get a charge. I'm good on. at that. Yeah. Hey, just so you know, uh, you've got 30 minutes left to go to smokerplans.net and take advantage of the uh, happy hour sale. I'm running at 40% off every set of smoker plans on the entire website. Um, anyway, don't know if I'll ever do it again. I, uh, I'm kind of blown away that, yeah, David David Kreiser says at least he has hair. <laughs> uh, miss you, brother. Anyway, get on over there because we've got every single set of plans, 40% off, just in case you're looking to build your own cooker. If you're not looking to build your own cooker, guys like Tom and Ryan and all these cool cats that are in here watching can build it for you. I don't know where Ryan went, but his camera is still running. And uh, so if you don't follow Ryan, you should follow him. Um, He actually does quite a lot of work, like fabrication-related work for cool people in Hollywood, Um, usually a lot of rigging-related stuff. 
But uh, Backline Smokers is his profile. And Backline Smokers, or Backline Fabrication, um, is Backline Smokers, which is his uh, smoker company. So I also see now that his uh, phone there has the spinning wheel of something happening right there. So has anybody got any questions real quick? Ryan seems... To have a dangerous area there, many sharp knives. Yeah, yeah, I see the sharp knives behind him. <laughs> uh, Tom says you got a dangerous work area. There's many sharp knives behind you. Yeah, yeah. Don't let <laughs> <it> out. <laughs> That's awesome, man. So um, anyway, I was just telling him about some of the uh, Hollywood work you do. Can you go oh. into that a little bit? Yeah, which, uh, which part do you want to get into? Like, what's the coolest thing you ever made? That's that's kind of a hard question. Um, not trying to toot my own horn or not, but uh, I made a lot of cool shit. Hey, I got to interrupt you on that statement. The thing I heard the other day, so you're in business, so you have to be known, you have to be a marketer, right, to get attention. And so the guy said, the fall guy truck. <laughs> What? And I love the fall guy truck. Anyway, uh, the guy told me, he said, if you don't toot your own horn, nobody else is going to toot it. So you better toot your horn, Ryan. So <laughs> go for it. Tell us the coolest thing you ever built. It would have to be, if you had to think about like uh, trying to, engineer something make it functional and how widespread it went through the world um i would have to say that i made these um floating dresses basically for uh lady gaga's world tour what yeah it was for her and two of her dancers and it was me and three other guys on my team and we had to figure out how to do it all the electrical work, all the fabrication and all that stuff, and then make it so that it could tour the world. Um, and it toured for, uh, I think her Born This Way ball toured for almost two years. Wow. So what's a floating dress? So uh, y'all can look it up online if you go on YouTube. Uh, you can look up Lady Gaga, Born This Way ball, and look up the song Bloody Mary, and you'll see what I'm talking about. So these dress, there's her and two of her dancers, they're on stage, and basically they move around the stage and everything, but they're not like walking. They literally look like they're hovering like ghosts. So we made that. Wow. Post. And they go from A stage to B stage, and then back to A stage again. So that Dude, had that's cool. pretty, pretty cool, pretty badass. And on that same tour, I made... Um, her Born This Way ball uh, album cover is basically her looking like she's the forks of a motorcycle, like with the wheel in the front. She wanted to duplicate that for her tour. So uh, me and my guys, we built her a trike that she hand operates with her fingertips through the forks of a motorcycle. Wow. <laughs> and she also drives around the stage. Those have to be probably two of the coolest things that I've ever made. Wow, man, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, that was all through a company that I worked for out in Hollywood, obviously. Yeah. So so how long did you do that kind of stuff? Ten years. Ten years, man. Yep. Yeah, wow. I worked in the studio for ten years and then uh, moved here to Texas. Um, worked for an uh, architectural steel fabrication company for two years. Uh, left there and opened up uh, Backline Fabrication just to get back into the studio stuff. Uh, did quite a bit of things for uh, South by Southwest out here, which is our music um, music entertainment festival thing that they do. Uh, and then as soon as our first year of South by was done, I did um, stage props for Katy Perry's uh, witness tour. And then right after Katy Perry's witness tour, I did Pink's beautiful trauma tour. So wow. <laughs> those are some other cool props that we did. And then uh, it was uh Within a year after that, you know, the smokers started picking up a little bit, started doing a lot more of the smokers and restaurant game. I built all the uh, smokehouse cooking equipment for uh, Banger Sausage House here in, in Austin. That's on my list this year. I want to go there, dude. You got to do it. It's it's a pretty badass place. I am building some more equipment for them uh, coming up here soon. 
Um, so once I got done with their stuff, then uh, it was nine months after that, whatever COVID hit and, you know, business went to a halt and then everyone got their Trump bucks and started buying smokers. So we've been in the, we've been <laughs> in the backlog on smokers ever since. Ever since, man. <laughs> yeah, Tom and I had the best day of sales we ever had, boy. And freaking immediately after that, it was impossible to get inventory. It's crazy. <laughs> right. All right. And it, and it's just like been that way for everybody in the business, man. Nobody can re- freaking get caught up. It's the craziest thing. But anyway, <laughs> called them Trump bucks. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's hilarious. That's funny. Yeah. So, uh, did you finish your little girly drink there? Uh, you must be talking to Barton. Yeah. I know you ain't talking to me. <laughs> well, you said rum and Coke or whatever it is. Dr. Pepper. I'm almost done. I figure Barton, I figure Barton's still on this feed. He's probably, he's probably drinking some kind of uh Lipton tea with a uh, spritzer water or something. <laughs> okay. Now, now, uh, you gotta be honest. Okay. I'm gonna ask you a question. It's not gonna happen. I'm gonna ask you a question. You ready? Favorite barbecue rub. Wait, no, no, let me preface what I'm telling you here. So with my with my boy Ben, my youngest. Hang on. This dude right here. Okay. So what I do is I I do this rapid fire. I ask questions. I'm like, did you do it? Did you like it? Was it any good? La la la. You know, and he just he's just like hammering out the answers. I want to try to pull that off here. It's hilarious. Okay. So <laughs> you guys say first thing comes to mind. Well, favorite barbecue rub. I'm gonna show you right now. It's a new one. Uh oh. I just got it. God darn it! I can't see. Here we go. Oh, America Pitmasters. Wow. What's the bottom part say? I can't read it. It's backwards and small. That's because it says Frank can't use this because it's only used by professionals. <laughs> Is that what it says? <laughs> Oh my goodness! Okay, oh, because I have you on the backwards thing. That's right. It says, so, uh, "Wow, steak seasoning great on beef, chicken, and pork." Yeah. Hashtag Pitmaster US. Oh man! So this is a this is an Arnie Tex rub. Uh, okay. Yeah, check it out under American Pitmaster Company. Cool. Uh, Pitmaster US is the website www.pitmaster.us you can find them on uh instagram at pitmaster us um with the hashtag uh pitmaster us look him up he's got a cool youtube page too so a lot of people how to cook using all his rubs and stuff too but this so, has got to be my favorite right now i just cooked those steaks tonight with this it's really good martin turned me on is that it. arnie's rub or is that a rub that no okay. it's it yeah yeah arnie tax yeah yeah he's cool man he's been there a long time doing that yeah so so that just uh totally shot my rapid fire questioning thing why what happened well because we took a long time to explain it we gotta go blah, 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 blah. I, I had to push my boy hey it's all good man, we can roll slow we don't have to go fast i just think it's funny when people are like yep nope Yep. Hey, this ain't no rapid fire. This is like we're going to push everybody. <laughs> Ask me some crazy shit about Barton. I'll tell you everything about him. <laughs> tell me some crazy shit about Barton. <laughs> <laughs> we probably all need to be sitting around the around the multi-tool before we have that conversation. Yeah, yeah. You've been around. <laughs> You've been there live. <laughs> hey, so, um, all right. The next question is favorite brand of knife. Do you have any, like, really cool knives that you use besides what you get at Restaurant Depot? Uh oh, you got the you got the bag. There's my Dow Strongs. Yeah, Dow Strong. Okay, I've never had a Dow Strong. I'm gonna yeah. have to check it out. These knives are fantastic. I have the Delta Wolf series. Look that up online. Dow Strong Delta Wolf. Okay, we'll do. Shout out to Dow Strong there. Ryan approved. Uh, I was calling. The next one is um, what. Uh, uh, hang on. I had it one second there. Dude, what's yeah, your friend, favorite Santa Maria rub? You're, you fell off the left coast over there. What, what, what's your favorite? 
Favorite Santa Maria rub from the left coast? Mm, I don't have it up here. Uh, it's basically, it's called Santa Maria. Is it the Colt uh, Cattleman's? Uh, hold on, let me see. I'm going to see if I can grab it real quick. They got they got one that's just like super coarse that I really like. Uh, uh, do you guys have um, do you guys have sprouts where you're at? Uh uh-uh. uh You don't have I don't sprouts. Think. Hold on real quick. I'm gonna see if I can find one. <laughs> Barton says you you can't play the the game because you can't answer quickly. Because I'm trying to show samples. <laughs> Barton's an idiot. He don't even know what he's talking about. I bet I get Barton on here. He'll go bam, bam, bam. But yeah, rub, rub, and knives yeah. and things like that are fast for him. Okay, I know what else to ask. Okay, okay, go ahead. I don't have a sample. It's in the box. Favorite welding wire, brand of welding wire. Esop. Okay. Uh, favorite alloy. What number? Oh man, come on. Nobody knows that. No. Just say, just say whatever the parts house has. Yeah. <laughs> er70s6 that's the, that's the one everybody has okay favorite welding hood yeah why are you even asking me that thing favorite <laughs> favorite weld what welding hood uh i have the uh shit i think it's the miller the miller yeah i got a miller uh i think it's the miller elite something or other it's the american flag one. Oh yeah 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 i had one of those one time long time ago probably <laughs> I've had so many welding hoods. Back in the day when it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Favorite, yeah, right. Favorite welding glove. I don't have one, man. I haven't found one that I really like yet. I actually saw you post those blue demons, so I might want to give those a shot. Dude, those are badass. I, I got to just you stop go the train. Them. You go through them, and they're like diapers, man. You're like, ah, oh, this is shit, and then you throw it away <laughs> and go try something new. So, um yeah, I haven't found anything that I'm 100 percent about. So I'm gonna give those a shot now that you posted it. So 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 the thing is, is like you got to respect your welding glove though, because like you know, just like using and abusing it is one thing, but like when you sit down to like run a bead, these things, these game changers are like they're literally feel like jersey gloves, man. They're like the most comfortable, most flexible glove I've ever used, and they got some new proprietary. Uh, fabric from uh, DuPont that's called Keegan. I have no idea, but it's awesome. It's kind of like a really heavy duty denim. Anyway, I'm a super fan. So I was using those stingers, which are pretty good too, but my old glove that I always used was the uh, Tillman 850Ls. Those, the elk skin with the yellow elk yeah, skin. The yellow wrist guard on them? Yeah, well, the yellow glove, but then uh, the cuff is just hard leather you know so i used to use the tillman's all the time that were the white and black but they have the velcro they were just the wrist size they weren't the full size yeah i use i never used like the you know like the forearm protectors until basically probably a year ago Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, man so i gotta give tom a shout out because he asked me here he says talk about my robo floor sweeper using it now Dude, why am I not getting any of the feet anymore? Well, I don't know why. There's I got it. I'm back. Never mind. Okay. So so the Robo floor sweeper, I'm not kidding. I have been jealous. I've been wanting to get one. They're about 116 bucks. Karcher is the company that makes them. There's like the people that make the the um the freaking uh power washers, the electric power washers. But they make this, it's like a push mower. But it's a it's a manual sweeper. The wheels turn, and there's brushes that do this, and it like, dude, it's awesome. Like what we would do is we would to run that down, huh? Just to clean the shop, to sweep the shop, man. It's like no more push broom. It it like has a dustpan built in, and it's it, the brushes just, dude. It's the coolest thing ever, man. That's, that's Tom has one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We bought that thing. I don't even remember, Tom. I don't know if he's paying attention now, but probably a year ago, year and a half ago, we bought that thing. It's 116 bucks, and they said it don't work for dust. They were wrong. All you got to do is take one of those magnet floor sweepers with the wheels and walk the entire floor and pick up all the metal and dump that in your scrap bin so you can uh, so you can sell that 
scrap back to the scrap guy. And then you take the little sweeper thing and you sweep all the dust up, man, it is the best. Cause that floor is like 18,000 square foot over there, man. I wouldn't want to sweep that with a push broom. Well, I've been there. It took us 10 minutes to walk from one. <laughs> side to the other. Ridiculous. Yeah. 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 So I need to get <laughs> one. For my you shop. 50, you can do 50 laps at my shop at that. <laughs> I, I can't throw a football from one end to the other. Yeah. Hey, we got a question back here from, uh, I believe it was Caribbean. Hang on, let me scroll back and get it. Um, Cornish Carnivore is who it was. Here we go. Will tuning plates have a negative effect on airflow on a small chamber? Do you know what tuning plates are, Ryan? Do you ever use them? I've done them on one on one pit before. Um, I did them on a forty-eight by twenty-four chamber, which would be one of my backyards. Uh, I did it on request. Um, I didn't see anything negative towards it, but. Uh, I don't, I don't use them. You know, yeah, you know, request. so, so I've used tuning plates quite a bit over the years. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I've always watched my door thermometers and just kind of felt the door, you know, like felt the cook chamber and, and used my hand for a thermometer and stuff like that. But recently I, um, I decided to go ahead and throw one of them ink bird digital thermometers on the cooking grates and just see what it did, you know? Well, I've always been the guy that cooks for appearance, not for for appearance and tenderness, not really paying really close to attention, except for uh, like when things go wrong. Then I really go back and, and think about temperature and stuff. But anyway, there was quite a difference between with the tuning plates. There's quite a bit of temperature difference between the cooking grate temperature and what the door thermometers show. Right. And so one day I've got a different pit that I just pulled them all out of it and just ran it raw, raw, just right dead open. I got to tell you, that was the best brisket I believe I've ever cooked. It's just wide open. So I don't believe they have a negative impact on airflow. Um, that Cornish carnivore guy was asking. I don't believe they have a negative impact on airflow. I just believe it's the it's whatever result you're looking for. Um, you know, like Horizon. Have you ever seen Horizon? How they do theirs, or uh, some of the older Yoder pits? They just have a single plate that runs the full length of the cook chamber, and then they start at the they. And Tom and I actually had some baffle plates we designed for the old Oklahoma Joes and all that stuff. Um, for retrofit parts, but they started at the firebox with a really small hole, like quarter inch. And then as it went the length of the cook chamber, the holes progressively got bigger. And then once it got to the other end of the cook chamber, they were about an inch and a half wide. And so it just kind of gives it an opportunity to distribute that smoke across the plate. And it works pretty okay, I guess, but I still think I got a better result just doing one brisket on that pit wide open no problems. What do you do on your cookers? Do you have some kind of a baffle that you like? On mine, I don't run. I don't, like I said, I don't do the tuning plates or nothing else. I do, uh, I do do a uh, deflector baffle coming from the firebox to the chamber. Mm -hmm. And then just to throw the heat down towards the bottom, um, mm -hmm. you know, just to stop it from basically hitting that first part of the grate right away. Uh, it does cause um, a little bit of a hot spot, but I am on to something new that I tried on my pit that I like uh, very well that I am starting to add to the new pits. Um, mm -hmm. After I get about six, seven, eight of those out and I see how the results go from, you know, feedback from my customers. My customers are pretty cool about letting me know like what they're experiencing and stuff, um, which helps develop the product even better. So the stuff that people are getting now is probably way better than what they're getting, you know, three years ago, um, just because of research and development, I guess you could call it. So I did try something on mine. I love it on my pit. Um, but you know, I also know how to run my pit because I'm the one that designed it. So I guess that's yeah. kind of messed up, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I think, it, I think I'm on something pretty good. And, um, some of that obviously was stolen from ideas, talking to you about it. Um, you know, <laughs> private, private conversations that we already had. So, uh, I think, I think it's something good. Um, but I'll, I'll keep with the deflector plate, but, uh, just with some modifications. One more question before we wrap up here. Cause I got to go pick my boy up. Johnny HD 77 wants to know, does Ryan know how to season cast iron? Is that a trick question? No, he sees the cast iron back here where it's all fucked up looking. Cause I have, <laughs> <laughs> I seen it too. I wasn't going to say nothing. 
It ain't a, oh. That ain't a legit question. It's just something going, hey, asshole, clean your, uh, clean your cast iron. <laughs> hey, it's cool, man. Hey, at least you got cast iron, dog. Yeah. That's all I cook in. I freaking love cast iron. Yeah, they're they're pretty awesome, man. I'm I'm glad I finally got into them. You know, it's been it was a while before I have it, and then <laughs> it's nice cooking on them. I didn't even see that skillet until he asked that question. I'm sitting here staring at it the whole damn time. I should have known. Yeah, it's dirty. <laughs> I got to clean oh, it. Because what happened that, last time? What I literally did is I I took it off the grill. I wiped it down with the paper towel that I stuck it back up on the rack. And I'm like, whatever. That's hilarious, man. All right, brother, dude, I've had a freaking good time. I got to drive through. So we had two inches of ice before we had eight inches of snow. So, so I got to run through all that to go pick my boy up at work. Um, But anyway, dude, I freaking love hanging out with you, man. And I'm so glad you joined me on this call and we're going to do it again. Thanks for the invite. uh, We do it all the time. What's that? I said, yeah, thanks for the invite. We should do it all. Absolutely, man. And next time we'll get somebody else on here with us, huh? Yeah, we should get uh, get Tyler on, on, man. That'll be fun. Dude, if we got Tyler on and we went bam, bam, with questions, bam, bam, like that, that would be hilarious. He wouldn't even be prepared for it unless he watched this entire live. No, yeah. Tyler, yeah, that's a whole other ball game. (laughs) I'd love to to rip into Tyler a little bit. Yeah, yeah. All right, brother. We'll see you, man. Yeah, we can get Tom on here too, maybe. All right, brother. We'll see you. Thanks, Uh, guys, for watching. I'm going to publish this video here in a minute and you'll be able to go back and watch the whole thing. It was hilarious and I had a great time. (laughs) Cheers. (laughs) See ya.